welcome Joystick Justice League to a brand new audio podcast show. Joe, uh, you kind of came up with this, so uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about what this uh, new show is called and what we're going to be doing on an episode-by-episode episode basis. All right, we're calling this uh, Joystick Justice League Presents Roundtable with Mike and Joe. Okay, so basically this is going to be kind of like a free-form podcast. You know, we're going to be talking about issues, we're going to be talking about history... Mostly about issues, just what the way I've what I kind of envisioned this from the way you kind of pitched this to me is that we're really trying to debunk a lot of like the yeah. fanboy myths out there, really get to the heart of where these consoles and these game makers are, the whole industry, where it's going, where it should be going based on what we've seen in the past. I mean, I, I know that, for instance, I pretty much have been following the industry in some way or form since I was probably two or three years old Me too. with my first interaction with like Pac-Man, Donkey yeah. Kong, and the Atari 2600. So I've, I've, I've seen the generations, you know, from one to seven, now eight, you know, and I'm sure you've been the same way. We were born the same year. Yeah. When did you start getting into video games? I started getting into video games in the, in the early 90s on, on PCs. Had a little taste of the consoles, but I was mainly a PC gamer for a long time. So you and weren't then, really an NES kid then? I was. When I played with, uh, with friends, when I played at home, it was always on PCs. And uh, I was a big PC gamer until it got to the point where I got sick of upgrading my PC all the time. And that's when I got, and that's when I started getting into the consoles, which was with the PS2. Stay with us here, folks. We're going to be getting to our topic soon, but I think this is like an intro episode, so we really want to kind of get... Uh, an idea of what our personalities are like here. Uh, so, Joe, you mentioned that you got into PC gaming. What was your first, like, PC, like, that you played hardcore on? Mine was the Commodore 64. Mine was the same. Okay. So, same. and that's the thing. It's funny because, like, I'm a pretty much a console gamer now. I, I, I do play some PC. I have a Steam account. But I would say the majority of my, I'd say 90% of my time is devoted to the PlayStation Network. Um, only because I, I just don't really feel the need to subscribe to two separate memberships and I'm just so entrenched in PlayStation. It has nothing to do with being a fanboy, it's just the fact that I have a massive friends list that I'm not going to start another one now. But anyway, that's beside the point. I was the same way. I uh, I actually started video gaming on a Commodore 64 as well. So I, I actually was a PC gamer to begin with, but it was really Mario that did it. You know, it, yeah. was, it was like the fact, I remember too that there was this ripoff of Mario that was yeah. on the PC, and instead of Bowser, you fought this big spider at the end, and yeah. it was actually really hard to play, but, yeah. and, and technically, like, the renders and the sprites were a little sharper because they were on a VGA screen, yeah. but there was nothing like playing Mario on NES with that controller and the charm of actually playing Shigeru Miyamoto's game. And, and it was funny, like, I wanted NES, right, but <laughs> my brother, you know, bless his heart, you know, he, he um, he was thinking ahead, right? Like, because the Sega Master System had just come out in '86. It was '88 around the time that my my family was shopping for my very first console yeah. for that Christmas, and he got the Master System on the basis that the retailer told him, "Oh, well, this one's more powerful. It's got more colors per screen: 32 versus 16 per screen. Yeah. You know, it's, it's blah blah blah." blah and, and they bought me the Sega Master System. So you should have seen my face thinking that I was going to open up a Nintendo. And, oh, Sega Master System. And, but fuck it, you know, like, you know, I played it. It was a my, console. I got my NES a couple years later. My, my first uh, experience with uh, with a console game was playing uh, original Duck Hunt. Yes. With, with a buddy of mine. And uh, even with me cheating, I, I would hold the gun right up to the screen. And I still sucked at that game. It was fun. And, and I still sucked at the same time. But it, it, it was just a fun, that was the, f the very first console game I played. It and then, was, and then, uh, and then it came with the Mario, and then later with the, the Sega stuff, and then went up. So, were you a sharpshooter, or did you cheat and put the gun next to the screen? I cheat. Oh yeah, all well, the way. Yeah. I had my competitor because I got the Master System bundled with uh, Hang On and Safari Hunt. Yeah. And actually, I actually did prefer the Light Phaser. Yeah. I was one of the minority because it didn't yeah. click. Yeah. It didn't have that spring-loaded click. You just, you know, it was just like a very simple. But yeah. anyway, so that was my foray into consoles, and then uh, the, the NES came about in the summer of '90. When I uh, worked all that summer at my dad's restaurant, washing dishes for like five bucks a day, because at that point the, the Canadian dollar was so weak. Yeah. Compared to the, this was back in like 1990, right? So at that point to get an NES here would have been about 200 bucks, right? It was expensive, yeah. To justify to like, it was during the recession too, right? So to yeah. already have a console and to say, oh, I want another one that's on one top of that. That's one thing that it was expensive back then. That's one thing that actually kept me from from morning when I was in a, going to play with my friends. Is, 
parents could afford it. Exactly. So, so my, my, uh, my exposure to it was, was going and playing with buddies, which came, you know, to this day while I still consider true multiplayer gaming is sitting down next to, sitting down with your buddies on the couch. On the couch. Play, playing a game. Absolutely. That's how I was introduced to it. We didn't have online back then. Like, no. if you wanted to play head to head, you know, the, the best version of that for the longest time was playing, like, Blades of Steel, yeah. you know, like, yeah. on the NES or, or doing co op Contra, you know. Oh, so oh, that yeah. was the way to do multiplayer. Yeah. But, um, you know, so anyway, that's that's really, really got me into console gaming. Now, the thing is, is that for, for the longest time, like, when console gaming was in its infancy in, like, the 8 bit era, people of my brother's age in their 20s and stuff who were going to college now, they were still playing PC games because they could play strategy games. Yep. Sim City was big at that time. Mm -hmm. um, Barbarian, you know, and, and all these, these great, like, these great, and Madden, Madden Football, right? Yeah. That started in 1989 on PC. Really cool, really cool on PC. And, and that's the thing, until the Genesis came out, yep. there was no alternative on the NES that would get somebody like my brother to come down to the console level with the rest yeah. of us kids, because really video games are still just a toy back then. What was your favorite game in those those uh, PC days? The PC days, I was really big into SimCity. Yeah. Uh, the original, be just because you can create these massive landscapes, which you can't do on the new PC version. Yeah. You get this plot of land, and really the only way you can technically expand your cities by coming by take becoming the mayor of your adjacent city and taking over that but anyway it just felt more freeform back in the days I, I really liked a lot of the platformers to be honest and that's that's really what forced my transition to consoles was to be able to play a lot of the platformers that, be, that were big at the time my fir first game that I really loved on the PC was uh, it was a game called full throttle nice and uh, that was a Lucas Arts game which uh, is to the best of my knowledge is not even really around anymore but uh, it was the first example of a game combining a real good story into the gameplay. That's why I loved about it. Yeah, that's, that's something that used on the 90s. The game is still classic and there are still people that it still has a real cult following. It's, it's, it, I really, really like that one. That, that really was what kept, I, I would say, it's funny, you, we, we talked about this before and you mentioned that we both, we both had the same experience where there was a break with our PC gaming days because mm -hmm. all of a sudden we couldn't handle the requirements anymore. I know exactly yep. the, the, the two games that did that for me. It's like I was a PC gamer, even in the NES days, even in the Genesis days, I was still playing Leisure Suit Larry, Space yeah. Quest. I love the text-based adventures. Yeah. You couldn't do that on consoles very well. They, they tried with Maniac Mansion and yeah. stuff like that, but not very well. No. But I remember when Wolf Wolfenstein was the first straw, like that, it, where like I could kind of run it. The, the remake of Wolfenstein. No, I'm talking about the original, the original, original, original. I'm talking about. I bought the shareware from Jumbo Video in London oh, wow. with, with the Street Fighter mod, where you would shoot M Bison yeah. and Ryu and Ken. Yeah. And then I remember it was Doom, Doom, mm. where he was just chugging yeah. on my 386, man. Oh man. And I'm like, oh my god, we have to get a whole new computer just to play Zoom. And, and I mean, we didn't have anything like that on the consoles yet until the 32X came along, and we had a perfect Doom. But yeah. that was where I finally sense of like, damn, you know, like. And then I saw that, you know. All the new sports games coming out for EA, where I started chugging my brother's hardware, and he was starting to get more interested in the EA sports games on the Genesis because they ran well. They may not have looked as nice, yeah. but they they had a great frame rate, and that's what I, the Genesis era, the 16-bit era, is where I found that the PC-loving adults yeah. and the college kids really started to take notice of consoles when they started actually started being able to deliver PC experiences, which you saw more on Genesis. Yeah. If you actually look back at their old catalog, it's all yeah. like strategy games, yep. PC ports. Yeah. Like uh, I hung in there a little bit longer than the PC, yeah. Until about uh, when Doom Three and Half Life Two, which uh, it, it it got to the point where I just I, I, I got, that I got, was like the the break. That, that point. was the nail in the coffin for me. I just say, you know what, I'm I'm tired of this shit. Valve really it makes you really like really appreciate what Valve yeah. how Valve changed the industry oh, really yeah. and it. You know, like uh, the, both of them with Quake, Doom, mm -hmm. that was really, and I, I noticed for a lot of people who hung out on PC that that was really the breaking point. Yep. Especially seeing the fact that at that point, Goldeneye was starting to come out for N64, yep. you had time splitters on PS2 yep. that were running at 30 frames a second or yep. pretty damn close. It, it became a tangible reality to be able to play shooters and then Quake came out on N64. Yeah. You know, Unreal Tournament came out on PS2. That, that line started to get blurred, yeah. and, and I'm telling you, that's been happening since the PS1 days, mm -hmm. where I really saw it. Like, if you look back, like what came out on PS1, Diablo, Command and Conquer, yeah. XCOM, all these PC that were pretty much identical to their PC counterpart, and now you're seeing that full circle again about yeah. 20 years later, 
with the PS4. Yep. And the PC connection is like this. If you yep. can see me crossing my fingers right now, <laughs> yeah. what do you think about what, like we we talked a lot about this on on breaking news. Yeah. Let, before we get into our topic, we, it's a roundabout way, but we're going to be talking about Xbox. Let's talk about people who are doing things right. Okay, so what do you think Sony's doing right right now? They obviously have a very big stronghold in the industry right now. Big grip. They're, they're, with, 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 what they're doing is they, they've come on and they've really innovated with a lot of different concepts. When it comes to really supporting the indie games, even even just the, the, the way the console is built. It's, it's built on a solid, simple foundation. The, the the way the hardware and everything works t t together, the, the games that they're coming with, and then get to, to what we're even talking about with the, the new Xbox, it seems like they're trying to trying to trying to follow, but not necessarily making the right choices. Okay, so expand on that now. We, we I we all, I just took you on a very extended multi-hour tour of the PS4, all yeah. the software I have for it. I took you on a tour of the camera functions. So what stood out for you? Like, well, what's what seems to be working? What could be fixed? What what's not working for you? What what's really working right now? From what you saw from the PS4 interface, some of the games you played. What's not really working? The, the, the voice commands still have a little ways to go. That, that, that that's not a real big main main, main feature. But uh, all, all the games there's a really good variety of games. You know, even with uh, like what did you play? We played some Warframe. We played some uh, Sound Shapes. You know, it's uh, you can play a little Battlefield 4. Doki Doki. Doki Doki. I mean, there's just there's a nice big variety of games. And, uh, something it, for every taste, it, pretty it, much. Something for, for every taste, even some of the casual stuff with uh, the little guys coming out of the controller and you can control them. There's, there's, just, there's a wide variety of games for everyone to be made by the big big guys and the little guys. Yeah, I mean, you can really see those those 8 gigs of RAM at work. I mean, yep. like that thing, like we like we did the, the, the RAM test, you know, like yep. pausing stopping and starting the game in standby mode and yeah. just how easy it is to like browse the store now and yeah. just a very elegant interface like it's, it's, yeah, it's the XM simple. yeah it's the XMB they're taken simple. to the next level you know adding yeah. that sub XMB yeah. now where it's not it, but it doesn't even work I, my biggest problem right now with the XMB is that everything just kind of gets added into mo a most recently played order where from left to right where yeah. the most recently played app will be on the left and all these 20 apps will be to the right they need to have a collapsible file system, whether they did it on the PS3, yeah. where you could create an album, put your Move games in one, put your PS2 games in one, put your PS1. And you don't have like a hundred things you have to scroll through. You just have like yeah. seven files, and then you have sub trees, a, right? A nice marriage in between the two. Have uh, if it's like you said, it's kind of seems to be ordering them in the way that you're playing them. You know, even have a separate folder. Right? These are your recently played games. These are the ones that. Uh, Maybe if you're avoiding games for a while, it, it can have a little folder here that says, you know, these are some games that you're missing, you should maybe go back and check out. It, it's, it's still early days with us, you know, all that stuff can be fixed with uh, updates and stuff. Yeah, the reason I'm not griping too much is what they got right. And, yeah, and I, I talked about <laughs> this with my buddy Tethered the other day, and we both said, streaming, they got it day one. Yeah. Like, it, I showed you mm -hmm. how it works, it's easy. Yeah. And it looks Very good. good. It does look good. Like it, it's, and I'm not even running it on the best settings. I'm running it on like medium high settings, and already I'm like getting a really good render of Battlefield 4 online. Yeah. Imagine when I close. upgrade my internet and I can actually go at full 1080p. It's gonna look awesome. Yeah. So they really nailed that. And what I love about the integration of Twitch and Ustream mm -hmm. is that it's divided the content, and, and it was actually a happy accident because in the first few first days of the PS4 after launch. When people were first getting accustomed to streaming through the Playroom app, where yeah. you can see a full screen render and you can see the AR bots dancing around, but you can stream that and what ingenious people were doing right away, they were like, okay, let's make a talk show, like a live talk yeah. show about games. Yeah. And sure, the first people out of the gate did it. Like, I'm like, wow, this is awesome. It's like a live news show. Then, of course, you get the crackheads. <laughs> Yeah, we who just get, get on there yeah, sure get and there. they fight trollers. Yeah, yeah. They they let, they wait yeah. for comments. Yeah. And, and what happened was the one night I was I was watching one of the broadcasts. It was this dude and his girlfriend. They're hammered. Like that's pretty much the theme. It's they're, they're called drunk shows. That's what I've termed them. Drunk shows where yeah. people get drunk on air and just hash about with their uh, weird followers. But anyway, this guy had him and his girl were drunk, and the girl looked pretty bad. Like she'd yeah. been drinking a lot. She's ready to pass out. I stopped watching, but then I read the news. I'm talking about national news, like Huffington Post, Drudge Report, that 
Twitch had to start banning use of the playroom because a guy had forced his girl, like, had started stripping her while she passed out. Oh. And it was that guy that I was watching. And so so immediately, the... within like a few days, yeah. bang, yeah. abusers, shut yeah. down. So what happened, all these people are now going over to Ustream, yeah. where they don't have those rules, because Ustream's yeah. not just about games, it's about broadcast. Yeah. Even that though, I think they're going to have to, because you know, we're not the only... There's no filter! Yeah, we're, we're not the only HBO playing this, so they're going to have to put in some kind of... It might already be under a bit of a parental control, but they need to make it so that they oh, can yeah. filter some of that stuff out. Dude, you like you yeah. can you can access this. I mean, granted, most of it's late at night, but that doesn't mean like so, some meth head yeah. at 3 p.m. is not going to get up there and start spewing hate propaganda. I mean, yeah. I don't mind. That's free speech, but you've got to like integrate yeah. parental controls. Here's the thing, somewhere. man. When you have a Twitch account on the on your settings, you can yeah. actually enable like an age restriction, but you can't do that on PS4 yet. Wow. You can't even kick or ban gonna, trollers. I think they're going to have to look into something like that. Yeah, and it's early, but the fact that yeah. they got so much right off the get-go yep. is good. And of course, what I was really trying to get at, what I think they, we both agree that is really pushing sales of the console and faith in it is the indies. Yeah, big time. So what do you think about like with Sony and like and their attitude towards indies? We we, we watched the indie yeah. game the movie tonight. You know they're they're really they're really embracing that that, that community. And they, and uh, we talked about this on breaking news. They haven't even to throw money or anything. They just they have been throwing them respect, and the developers have been bringing it back to them. They've been supporting really them, man, cool giving them their bound like exactly. it, 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 See, you got to be an artist to understand how an artist works. I mean, yeah. every artist functions differently, has a different creative process, and. and Sony being led by like with the with the PS4 being led by like people like Mark Cerny yeah. and Shuhei Yoshida who are like two best friends like these yeah. guys have been working for at least over like 30 years together in various degrees we're talking about Mark Cerny like okay fine people are divided on knack but let's not yeah. forget this guy gave us Spiral the Dragon yeah. Ratchet and Clank and basically got down and dirty with the developers yep. and said this you get you tell us what console yeah. you want yeah. And they went right to they went I they didn't say this outright, but we know they went to Treyarch, they went to Infinity War, they went to Dice. They're like, design our fucking controller for us. What is it gonna make yeah. Battlefield awesome? Yeah. They listened. And they nailed it with that controller. Oh. And, and that's gonna be a theme of this podcast. Yeah. They listened to people. Exactly. Okay. They they gave people what they wanted. Didn't tell them what they wanted. They didn't tell them what they wanted. So. Now getting to with that theme, telling people what what they want versus giving them what they want, and we know that Nintendo is one of the biggest fucking, like, impo like, like, what's the word I'm looking for? They're just, they're guilty of this. Yes. And, and, but I really want to talk about Xbox. This is the theme of the podcast. This is not, I, I know we're gonna get trollers for this episode. I know people are gonna start hating us in the comments. For sure. We're trying to present a very unbiased uh, view of what's happening to Microsoft. What we feel is happening to Microsoft, because I think we pretty much agree what's happening here. Yeah. It's like a self-sabotage. It really feels like that. It really it is. Really I mean, it's just it's... bad moves. This has nothing to do with being a Sony fanboy. I, yeah. I own Nintendo consoles. I own yeah. PC. I would buy an Xbox One tomorrow if I had a compelling reason. I'll get into that soon. Why I don't feel the Xbox One is a holiday console, period. Yeah. I'd rather mm -hmm. buy a Wii U for anybody yeah. over an Xbox One. Sure. All right, so let's get into our first topic. Let's t let's talk about the thing that's really on my mind right now. I want to hear what you think about this. We saw that article, um, and it's been re it's it, there's been some updates about it. But we heard first a few weeks ago that a whole bunch of indie developers jumped on board with Xbox. Yeah. Good news, right? Uh, I thought so. Yeah. Okay. So you know, let's uh, we'll get to some of those developers in a yeah. bit. What happened recently? What do we hear? We heard that uh, that Sony and, and this is it can be the first of uh, so many. They're basically punishing these guys. You mean Xbox is yeah. punishing? Yeah, they're, they're basically punishing these third-party developers for going multi-platform. Wow! I mean, <laughs> it's there was a clause. Um, I don't have the article with me, but we will we'll, we'll probably they, they called it the parity clause. The parity clause. Thank you. Basically, yeah, just kind of in a sense saying that if you've already agreed to put this game out on Steam or yeah. Game GOG, yeah, you're gonna have to wait to put it on our console. Yeah, that's basically what they were saying. Exactly, immediate outcry. Developers oh, started thing. speaking out like, "Wow, yeah. like we're getting our game delayed because we want to put it on multi-platforms." I mean, come on, these people are like they're they're trying to feed themselves. Mm -hmm. Nobody, 
Like, the reason that my Naughty Dog makes games exclusively for Sony is because they get a big fat bonus for staying loyal, okay? Exactly. These indie developers don't have the same luxury. No. They have to make their money. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing. Again, it's just like, it's so underhanded. Two days prior, almost, it was like you announced, oh wow, we're we're welcoming indies into our stable. Like, let me, I got the list here. We were welcoming Vlam Beer, uh, the makers of Super Crate Box. We've got... We've got uh, Double Fine coming on. We've got Drinkbox, the makers of Guacamole. We've got Way Forward. I mean, we like the list goes on. Ninja Beat, long. Team Colorblind, all the, and especially controversially, Insomniac. Insomniac. Okay. <laughs> that, that, that one. I'm still having a hard time. I don't know where that's going. Figure that out. I I I don't know if they're if they're uh, if they're what they're what. They're they want to do Sunset Overdrive exclusively on Xbox. Fuse was their first multi-platform experiment and they've completely... The Ratchet and Clank series has lost its soul. They don't care yeah. anymore about that series. And they're it, good games. And it, it just puzzles me that, that, that they're, they're choosing just one because uh, I mean, hardware-wise, I mean, it's the systems aren't really all that different. Why why they're, they're choosing that after being a Sony exclusive studio for so long? I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time... I get it. They want to make more money, but but going exclusive on Sunset and go, Overdrive, and go, like and, and going to the other side. Yeah, exactly. It's, when it's and, and Ted Price has has honestly been making some baffling moves. Again, yeah. it came down. To, I, I thought he lost his mind when he made Fuse. Yeah. I mean, I remember watching his developer walkthrough of Fuse, and he was talking about how the actual material Fuse that you used to create your weapons was the story driving element. And immediately, I'm like, oh my god, that's got to be a hollow story. Yeah. If this, if it's about uh, and Fuse was full of like stereotypes of yeah, characters, uh, archetypes. Yeah. There was no soul to it, no. and that's when I and when I and I saw the damage that was happening to the Ratchet and Clank franchise. I, I really started to wonder where Insomniac's priorities are. Did, but I mean, they're they're one among many. I'm starting to wonder if they if they did that on purpose to try to make this happen, and if it's going to end up backfiring or what's going to happen. We, you don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but you never know, <laughs> right? And again, we are talking about self sabotage, which yeah. almost suggests a, a conspiracy. Like, really, I know I don't want to get into that. That, that angle, but it, it, you, like you said earlier, what the hell is going on with Microsoft? What? Yeah. And I think we, we, we're, we're getting down to um, one of the reasons later down the list is that mismanagement. Yeah. Tell me about some of the people running Xbox right now. Well, originally we had, uh, you know, it's uh, the person that they chose to take over for Don Matrick is. Her name is Julie Larson Green. Okay. Okay. And so that, tell us about her, her. Julie Larson Green. Tell us about her resume. Her resume, and, and I, I had to look this up to find because I, I had no, honestly had no knowledge of her. She's been in Microsoft. It was a quiet almost, move. Almost twenty years she's been around, but her resume is is it, it doesn't fit for for what uh, she's going to be doing. She's a for, former designer of Office. And uh, had a lot to do with Windows 7. 19 years with yeah. Microsoft. Micro sorry. She's been with Microsoft for a long time, but has had no active role in the gaming industry. So, why is she being picked for, for, for this job? To head. To, to, to head it all. And, uh, and not just Microsoft, their they're whole, basically, their they're portable hardware division. Uh, what portable hardware division? I mean, they're so behind the times. Yeah. They should have come out with something. Around the PSP era, and now they're they're out. There's the, 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 the I get they got talking. smart glass. Smart glass is not a console. Smart glass is like a playbook for Madden or Commander mode on Battlefield. We were talking about portable Xbox for a long time, and that never materialized either, right? It's that which uh, I think a lot of people were kind of hoping it was going to. And, and I don't know what happened to it. It just kind of. Well, that's the thing. I mean, people were laughing at the PS Vita for so long until they saw the remote play, and then like, oh, yeah. okay, we see the long term vision here. Yeah. Right. It's like it, maybe it failed as a, like a native games player. Like yeah. nobody really cares about buying games for Vita, but it's already paid for itself in how in how great Battlefield 4 plays in it. And I really want that's another myth I want to debunk really quickly about remote play. I've heard some people speaking out saying that it's useless and that it doesn't. It only runs at 30 frames a second. It really depends on like your Wi-Fi connection. If you have yeah. a good connection, it'll run fine. Yeah. And in terms of useless. It really just depends on the game. NBA 2K14 is not useless because you don't no. need touch controls to play it. No. So you're just playing a streamable, and it looks great. Like yeah. it's it's fantastic. So I mean, I'm not trying to sell PS Vitas here, but I, I think that second screen technology is something that 
yeah, while well, Xbox One offers it via Surface and your phone, yeah. it's really not a Vita. Yeah. Or a, or a yeah. 3DS even. like. Yeah, it's a... Uh, it, it, it with a... Uh, you mentioned when, with the phone, I'm not even 100 percent sure on that. They're so vague on what they're offering for services and what, and what you know. And, and this is going to be something that we're going to cover in a later show. I'm going to just Both surface briefly touch on it, and, and, and not just surface the whole portable Windows environment. It, it, it's such a disorganized, unfocused mess. It, when you look at uh, iOS, they they run the same operating system on each device. For, for Windows, you have Windows Phone. You have a couple different versions of that. On uh, on the tablets, you have three, four different versions, and you can't you, you can't use them. On, you can't you're, you're, if you're if you're running RT software, you're stuck for just running on there. You can't run that on regular Windows, and and vice versa. It, it, it's it's a big people are, are are buying a Surface and not even knowing what they're getting or what they're going to be able to do on it. You, you think they would have learned from iLife or even Chrome? Yeah. Like like, yeah. like like setting up Chrome on my PC and then getting it to connect to everything and then connecting to my Android phone it's is beautiful. Your it's beautiful. It it's run all running the same yeah. stuff. It's like my all my devices speak to each other. Yeah. And, and I and it just boggles me. And again, the reason why these mistakes are being made is because you have you're just shifting execs around Microsoft, people who necessarily don't know anything about computers or, or the gaming industry that are running these Companies versus Sony, which has got tried and true developers. I mean, even look at Nintendo, man. Like yeah. you got hardcore veterans running that company. Yeah. Wait, wait, minus Reggie Fizem, which I've got problems with. That's another podcast <laughs> altogether. Um, but getting back to Microsoft, I mean, really, there's a problem with the Indies. Um, there's a problem with that. Let's talk about Steve Ballmer here. Oh wow! I mean, it's a. Uh, you, you know, I, I showed you some videos on YouTube. I mean, this guy. I mean, it's, when, you, when you look at. Who is Steve Ballmer? That's just anybody who doesn't know. Steve Ballmer was, was former CEO of Microsoft. He, he was he was the big Kahuna, right? Right, and uh, he would go. He was really really known for these presentations. He would go up on stage, and I mean it, it, it was. I mean you can't not like just fall on the ground <laughs> laughing when this guy gets on stage. I mean it is just ridiculous. He's like one of those like and cheerleaders. And this guy's that... the public face of the company. And you have a guy coming around screaming and flailing his arms around. Developers! Yeah, what was developers! That developers! He, developers! He, developers! Guy, developers. He, he yelled developers to the point where he's sweating through his clothes. And, and then like, the meme, insane. the meme circus afterwards, like yeah. people were auto-tuning it and like Showing doing Minecraft memes. Around. Oh, oh this, man. It's just hilarious. And then you see somebody like Steve Jobs come out, all quiet and reserved, just down to business, yeah. no hype, no yeah. cheerleading, no music. Let's just go talk about the product. Yeah. Or even like Mark Cerny, who comes out as a very articulate. You can tell the guy's got an IQ of over 160. The guy's a gifted individual. And say what you want to say about Knack. The guy had designed the PS4, and you saw it in action tonight. Yeah. Again, I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to suck any corporate, you know, you know wing what? wang here. But yeah. like, really, I mean, I, I have to give credit to quality where credits due. On the other side, let's talk about quality here. Let's talk about the myth of all the bricked consoles on, on each side. And specifically Xbox, because I, I think the PS4 in reality has actually had more defective consoles than the Xbox One. Let's, yeah. let's talk about what you've been discovering about this supposed myth of all these broken Xbox Ones. Well, it seems, seems to be happening. It, it's, uh, it, it's been, uh, there's been a lot of activity going on about this. and. Uh, and what seems to be happening is that uh, it's not people aren't just buying these and then they're just they're just failing. What people seem to be making a mistake is, is they're not aware that they can't play 360, 360 Which games was a major games. rumor in the summer that exactly. all, and people I heard people saying, "Oh, my Xbox One's gonna play Xbox 360 games." Yeah, well, but I mean, this started back before they started developing. They they said a whole things that it's not gonna be able to do and can't do. You know, at the beginning they they said that uh, that they weren't gonna play used games and they backpedaled on that. You know, originally it was kind of vague whether they were going to play 360 games, and then they they backpedaled on that. It's a, it's a reoccurring theme, these guys. That's really, I think, why they had to get rid of Don Matrick. It was it was he was pretty much the the fall guy for the the big Xbox 180 it was kind debacle. Of a shame, actually. You just mentioned like the whole Xbox 180. It was mm -hmm. like the whole no DRM thing was like the first sounding alarm where it's like. All of a sudden, first, like early in the day, like Xbox puts the E3 con conference out and says, 
We're not going to allow you to play these games. Screw you, Gamefly. Yeah. Screw you, GameStop. Yeah. Screw you, AB Games. And the, the, game the, the internet, that day I was watching oh. it, the internet was aflame. Because there, 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 there's a lot of gamers out there that's, that's still... The, the, the used game market's still a really big thing. There's, there's quite frankly, just a lot of people that just... They're, they're, they're on a budget and still want to play some of these games, and they're just, they don't want to pay the full price for it. So to, to hear them say that, it was just... And, and then was, to have Sony scary. come out several hours later and yeah. say, "Oh yeah, and by the way, our system plays these games." <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole yeah. play, the whole internet erupted. And then yeah. what happened next day? Oh well, the Xbox decided that we're gonna, you know, yeah, they changed their follow suit so fast. And this is what oh, I mean man. when you don't have experienced people yeah. running your company, yeah. you are gonna make bad, hasty, yeah. short-term decisions, which is. What really started in the 360 era. Yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna say this right now for all you fanboys. I, I agree. The 360 was a great system. Yep. Beautiful. It, over, uh, I would say up until about 2009, maybe 2010, it had better third-party exclusives. The whole myth that it continues to have better third-party exclusives after 2010 is completely a myth. Yeah. I dare you to find a difference between Black Ops 2 on either system or yeah, like yeah. Assassin's Creed. Actually, Mass Effect 2, I was yeah. told by one person, looks better on PS3. Yeah. So let's let's not get into apples and oranges here. Here's the point. Getting back to my point, I've always, I've always said this. They, they showed their short-term focus when they started pouring all this money into timed DLC. Yeah. Okay, it started with Grand Theft Auto. They threw a whole bunch of money at Rockstar, which yeah. built its house on PlayStation yeah. in the PlayStation 2 era. Yeah. So that was shocking. Yeah, yeah, big time. Back then, okay. Yeah. So you got you, you do that. Then Call of Duty with the time releases. Mm. As a PlayStation player, did you give a shit about having to wait a month? No. Exactly. Yeah. I'm a patient guy. Yeah. What? what so they spent all this money. Sony, on the other hand, spent through all this money at developers yeah. to make games like The Last of Us. Yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. Now they're going to this generation with at least 30 plus franchises. Yeah. That they can go back to Uncharted, Twisted Metal, Starhawk, yeah. Ratchet and Clank. You know, what does Microsoft have to, to go up against them? Halo? Does anybody care anymore? Uh, and we're going to get fired for this. Oh, yeah, I know we will. And, and people do care, but do is it care. big anymore? It, it's, you know, it, I've asked people that, uh, that they're looking at getting the Xbox ones, I, and I said, oh, so are you, are you guys excited for, for an next Halo title? And they go, yeah, not really. It, it, it's, it's a franchise that, that people are quite frankly getting, they're, they're tired of, I think. I, I don't think it innovated enough in the last two iterations. No. I think I, I think that their current developer, yeah. what's it, uh, 380, no, I'm getting this wrong, the new developer, 383 Studios or whatever, Yeah. I'm going to get that wrong, they get fired for that, trollers, whatever, I got it wrong. Anyway. They, they're not the create. They're not Bungie, okay? No. It's it's like when you separate Jason West and Vince Ampella from Infinity War. It's not Infinity War, no. man. You know, it's like when you take Carmack out, out of, of it. it. You know, it's it's not it anymore. Yeah. I don't we'll care. See. We'll see about that. We'll one. see. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. But you know what? I just feel. Yeah. That's like a, when you when you take when you take take the heart and soul out. Your, your, your key figures out of there. It's. Oh, you lose man. focus. And you lose focus. You lose focus. And Sony's had the same people running yeah. the show. Kazurai did it very well for, for a while there. And and now yeah. Shuhei Yoshida and Mark Cerny are doing a really great job of, of propelling it. Yeah. The, I really think the Indies is going to be like the make or break point of this next generation. Like, it's, it's becoming its own sector of the culture now. Like, you know, pe yeah. the indie, people can just play indie games and never have to play a AAA game. I know people like that. Well, well I'm curious to see now, because you mentioned that uh, that uh, Microsoft was uh, basically going to punish these developers for, for going through a party. And from what we've seen, it, it looks like they're backpedaling on that decision. They but, are. Yeah. But is it, that, that threat of that for these indie developers, is, is that going to scare them off? I, I thank you for bringing that up, Xbox. because we did see the update to that article. Yeah. So going back again, what we said before is that Microsoft is, had enacted this clause that would punish developers for going multi-platform. They've since redacted that, saying that they're going to review them on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, knowing how that works in bureaucratic talk, that means a lot more paperwork, a lot more testing, and you're basically at the will of Microsoft, which is why I wanted to show you Indie the Game, the movie tonight, so yeah, you could see what Tommy and Edmund from Team Meat 
<laughs> went through when they booted up Xbox Live and it te Super Meat Boy wasn't there. It got delayed. Uh, Look what happened to Phil Fish, man. man. Took a year to patch all the yeah. flaws of Fez on Xbox 360, yeah. which is what led to him quitting the industry for like two days yeah. until Cliff Blazinski comes out and says, "Man, we need you. Yeah. Just just ride the storm." Yeah. And now he's going to Sony. Yeah, can't blame him. Because he's seen yeah. how they treated Jonathan yeah. Blow. Jonathan Blow, you read my mind. I was just gonna say that. And uh, another guy who's been been attracted to Sony with a game called The Witness, which we covered in Breaking News, which is uh, you know. It, He'll probably come out of the Max Ox, but you can tell he's he's uh, really been uh, affected by this uh, deal with Sony and uh, the, just the respect that they're giving that they're they're giving these small developers. And you know what? I want to I want to get like talk about how respect goes a long way. It does. Remember how we mentioned back in the previous podcast how it almost seems like a, like a, a two in one win for Sony that now yeah. they're starting to get the exclusives. They're starting to get the time releases for. Almost for free. I don't. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't go that far. Maybe there's some money involved. But it seems now like Destiny is on the Sony. I mean, sorry, Bungie's on the Sony train with Destiny. They already said that. Preferably, the PS4 version is going to be the version to play. Yeah. That's the one we're putting our backing behind. Even Ubisoft, you can see with all the exclusive DLC for yeah. Assassin's Creed, they're starting to see the like the fact that they ignored Sony for too long, and now. They're starting to give, like Hotline Miami 2, coming out first on PS4, yeah. Mercenary Kings first on PS4. Yeah, It's a, it's a new it's, trend, right? It, 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 it's, it's a trend, and, and it's, it, it's I think the, the list of exclusives for Xbox is going to get smaller and it's smaller. It's dwindling, man. It, it's dwindling, and I'm not oh. saying that Titanfall isn't going to make some noise. Yeah. What happens after that? You know, like and, and, and exclusives are an important thing when you're talking about consoles, because those are the games that really make you want to consoles or Absolutely. Like, when you've got two identical versions of Battlefield, it yeah. comes down to exclusives. Exactly. Because I mean, those are the kind of games that are on, they're on both platforms. When it, those exclusives, I mean, that's what makes you choose a console. And that, I'm repeating myself here, but i got to say it again. You know, that list is dwindling down for a minute. So. Yeah, and you know what's funny is that it's getting more skewed by another point on this list. Yeah. Let's talk about the whole... Um, resolution debacle that's going on. There's a lot of different uh, stories coming out about what the PS4. They're both at fault they're both, here. They're both guilty of this one. And it comes down to Battlefield, yeah. all right? And yeah. let's talk about this, all okay, right? So let me start you off here. It's come out now. It started with Call of Duty Ghosts. We found out that the PS4 version on a day one update can be upgraded from native 720 to native 1080p. It's not being upscaled. We're talking native 1080p on pretty much on par with the PC version right. where Max Infinity Ward admitted that the Xbox version, 720p, that's it. That's it. So that is what started this big debacle. Yeah. All right, so what have you learned from this since? It's a, uh, it's been a, uh, well, it's, it's turned into a real mess. I mean, it, 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 even there's though, a lot of disinformation out there. It, there's a, there's a lot to, to, to sift through. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, on Xbox One, they're not running full 1080. It's there. It's we're finding more and more games that aren't. Yeah. Like, and, and here's the thing. Like again, we, we know it's early in the gen. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not. And there's always the people who say I play games, not pixels. You know, and that sounds like a defeatist kind of excuse. Yeah. Here's my argument. We're paying five hundred dollars for these new consoles. Okay, I paid five hundred bucks for the PS4 once I got the camera and yeah. game. Right? Doesn't matter. Point is, I want. PC quality graphics right now because you know what yeah. the PC market has been enjoying 1080p 60 frames a second albeit on high-end machines yeah. for the, like the last half decade at least okay yeah. why can these new horsepower consoles neither of them can do that need of 1080p yeah. on Battlefield 4 hello everybody yes it's true it's 900p on PS4 yeah. 720 on Xbox and, uh, and, and even even when you, you pick up the game and you, you, look, and you look at the box and they're telling you Hey, this is what it's going to run at. It says 1080p on the back it's of the Battle for it. It doesn't say upscale the 1080p. Right. Yeah. And what the hell's with this lying now? Like it's Dead Rising 3, 720p. 720p. And what the hell? And that's 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 their arguably their launch title. And you're Th not running. the one that all the Xbox yeah. fans are talking about. Nobody's talking about Rise. We all know it's a piece of shit. Nobody yeah. wants to defend that game. No. Nobody's even dared defend Fighter Within. No. Nobody's surprisingly nobody's talking about Killer Instinct. No. Do you hear anybody talk about no. Killer Instinct? And I think it's because of the free the the uh, the build your own game model that they uh, went yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, you get like what maybe one to three characters yeah. that you can play as Saber Wolf or something. Yeah. And you got to buy your way into the game. Yeah. Whereas you can pay. 
what, six, 60 bucks for Injustice, fully loaded with like hundreds of fighters and like a story mode. Like, yeah. I think Nether, it's getting off a tangent, I think Nether Realm is really up the bar, and I think Killer Instinct is too old school to really compete with what Mortal Kombat did yeah. for the fighting genre, and even Street Fighter 4, you know, yeah. or Injustice, you know. I don't know if Killer Instinct's gonna do, but really, Dead Rising is the one that everybody I know is talking about. You gotta get an Xbox One to play Dead Rising 3. What do you think about that game? People well, ask us to yeah. talk about it. Let's talk about it. it it's a uh, yeah. It looks good. It, it, it looks good, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to wonder with uh, because these are still first games for this for this for this generation. Are they having to be a little tough time for the, with the hardware, and maybe that's why they're notching things down? And and if that's the case, say it on there. You know, the, it's, it's put it up, put it on the box. Hey, the, this is running at 720, and I would be Don't fine. Don't lie to us. I, I would be fine with that. I mean, if they come out and said, you know, we're, we're running this alert because we're still trying to figure this hardware out, it's, it's still a really early days. But don't say you're running on 1080p and then look and see that it's not. Right? Yeah, it's this whole upscale, Billy. And, and, and that's, I really started to see the problem with lying about upscaling when Uncharted 2 came out. Mm. And you saw those damn jaggies, which is basically aliasing. Yeah. You know, uh, it's because you're taking a small scale image and blowing it up to large yeah. scale. Yeah. And, and you see it. I mean, when you see Battlefield 4 being played on the Xbox, I mean, you can still see it to a, a certain degree on the PS4 version, but it's telling. And this is next gen. Like, yeah. come on. Like, I know it's early, but it should at least be able to handle 1080p 60 frames a, a second out of the, out of the bat. Bang. Yeah. And, and in fact, this is like, I think Forza at this point is really the only title that can do it. Yeah. That's, that's that's not that, and, and I, I understand. I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off, but I understand. Where Review Tech USA he says he's concerned. Yeah, and, it's and still and early, and rightfully so, I think. Up to a, a rocky start so far. For both. For both. Yeah, not just for, and we're not just just don't mistake us as we're just hating on Microsoft. These guys are both guilty. Some of absolutely. Stuff. You know, I'll be honest, man. <laughs> this is the first. I, I like my PS4. I can yeah. see where it's going. Yeah. But it's not the shock that the PS3 was when I first hooked it up to the HD TV and mm. I saw Virtual Fighter because I when I got my PS3 I still had a standard TV and I was playing Virtual Fighter 5 on it. Mm. Then when I hooked it up to my uh, <laughs> my TV, I'm like oh my god, yeah. it's like my opening my eyes up for another toy. And, and never mind when I upgraded to 1080p TV, but I don't feel that shock with the next gen yet. I mean, no. I kind of see it a little bit with it's it's a very subtle difference. Though. Very it subtle, really, really is. Yeah, it is. Right. I think it's going to come down to, maybe not with the, the graphics, but adding more gameplay-wise elements. Like I was telling you, the Battlefield 4, it still feels like a, like your, your your AI buddies are still dumb. Well, very dumb. Right? So, so, very dumb. So I, I would almost be happy with it if, if they just said, you know, we're running at a low resolution, but we're going to allocate some of this uh, memory in the system to maybe make gameplay a little bit different. Little Get rid bit of better. that useless campaign. I mean, they admitted yeah. right before the game came out, it's like, oh, us Swedes, you know, we're not good at writing stories, but we're really good at building game systems. <laughs> well, then don't make a campaign or yeah. hire somebody who can write a screenplay. You yeah. guys have millions of dollars off Battlefield 3 and yeah. Bad Company. You couldn't hire some hack waiter <laughs> out of LA yeah. that hasn't got a day yeah. job to write a narrative twist. You've got Michael Kent, poor Michael Kenneth Williams from Boardwalk Empire yeah. left with nothing to say in that script. Anyway, that's the reason I'm probably going to play Ghosts just so I can play something of a campaign. But it, I understand, like I, I, I get it, like the PC elitists are having a field day right now. Oh, yeah. You know, they're like, oh, 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 PS4 can't even do what my PC can do. And yeah, but the majority of those people... It's the first month. Like, but the majority of those PC gamers, they're not running at full res either anyways. Yes. Thank you, Joe. I think you just <laughs> broke down a major myth. Oh, I that, want you all that, to know this. That's one that particularly it, it gets under my lot. It just gets. Oh it, my God! It, it doesn't make my. How many times have you been lied to? Okay, you've got a PC gamer come up to you and say, "Oh, I'm playing I, Bioshock Infinite." Yeah, you're playing it at like minimal settings, so my PS3 version still looks better than what you're playing it. Okay, yep. like. And I know some people that can actually run these, but we're talking about thousands of we dollars a versus a $200 console yeah. when Bioshock Infinite came out. Yeah. $200 to get a PS3 or an yeah. Xbox 360 versus paying, what, 1000 1500 for like more, a, yeah. more yeah. for a computer that can run it. <laughs> like Mac Pro will probably run it at full settings, but I mean... Yeah, man, and that's the thing. The, P, the cost of being an ace PC gamer will always be oh, high. It's okay? expensive. That's why I got out of it. 
that's what it is. Like, and, and that's that, 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 that just that head slapping moment. Like, you bought your PC, it's like six months down the road, all of a sudden a new Unreal Engine comes out or a new graphics card that just blows updates. everything out and you gotta update. Yep. Bullshit, and it man. It often. It's too, it's, it's, it's like, the, the, here's the, the, the Sony, the PS3, you really saw that generation where it was built with lasting power. Yep. You look at the games that came out, or even 360, like, mm -hmm. these, these, these systems had like a lot they could do, and that's the thing with the PS4. I mean, you can't put that down yet no. because they've already been able to do Assassin's Creed and Ghost at 1080p yep. they, with a day one update. I'm sure that with Battlefield 4, because they're not doing a sequel next year, they you never know. Yeah. Maybe they'll find out a way to bump it up. Yeah. It's not a big deal at this point, but I, I understand the concern. I, I wouldn't take it to the extreme that the PC leaders are saying, oh, next gen's screwed, you know? No, I, I think it's too early, but I think Xbox going with proprietary chips yeah did the same mistake sony made in last gen yeah exactly. with the cell processor yeah make it too hard to program for and the developers Maybe. are saying the same thing it's that ram yeah. that the xbox used yeah and, and uh, you know on the flip side too you know it's uh not totally hating on pc gamers because you know on the flip side console gaming has been uh saying that has been calling the that the PC is going to be dying to it, and it's not going to. There's always going to be a piece always of coexist. Well. I think we already know that with Oculus Rift pretty much, uh, well, being PC exclusive for the next generation, they've already Oculus Rift said that we're not doing this on PS4, or Xbox One. That That's, may change in five years. I doubt it. I, I, I don't think it will. Especially with, with, with the horsepower you need to run Oculus Rift. I think it's going to be just Steam and PC only. Yeah, and that's what's going to keep PC competitive when the PS4 yeah. does start to catch up to most midline yeah. PCs, which what most PC gamers are running. I would say maybe 25% of being generous actually runs games in yeah. full settings. Most people are running at like mid mid settings, I'd say. You know, and touching briefly on Oculus Rift, you know, to be honest, I've been thinking about since we talked last time. That uh, I'm, a, I'm frankly a little bit worried about Oculus Rift and whether it's going to pan out to be what uh, what they're hoping that it's going to be. I think they're I'm, trying I'm, to I'm, go too fast. I'm, I'm, I'm worried that it's going to blow up in their face. I think the 4K thing is is a distraction. I think getting it at 1080p yeah. is what can you can handle now. And I Even think 720 would be alright. Well, absolutely. And you know what, man? If they had stuck with that, they probably could have done it on I, PS4 I, and Xbox I, One. They're gonna they're gonna get trapped into this. Uh, is that they're gonna get they're gonna get close to, to being where they want to, and then it's something they're gonna they're gonna be taking like one step forward and two steps back. I I, I, I hope it doesn't happen to them, but uh, quite frankly, I'm a little bit worried about what's gonna happen with them. I will say this on the I think that, I think taking Carmack on is a little bit of a cry for help for them. But it's also a bold, a brilliant move. It, it's a brilliant move too, but I'm a little worried that it was maybe it's uh, that, that, that they're really reaching for something, and uh, I hope it's going to help them. But I'm, quite frankly, I'm a little bit worried about what's going to happen with Oculus. Right? Yeah, I, I but I, at the same time, I'm, I'm not worried in the sense that they are tied to Valve and Linux. You yeah. know, and Linux is taking off, man. Like it's it it's is. becoming a thing. It's a surprise, actually. It really surprised me how many people were talking about it because people are fed up with Windows. Getting back to Microsoft. Yeah. And the Xbox One uses Windows 8. Let's talk about Windows 8. It's a uh, it, it Windows to, to make it Microsoft Xbox One. It's identical. It, it, it's basically the Windows 8 interface. And uh, when it comes to Windows 8, the way that that interface is set up, it's set up to be a touchscreen. That that's been from day one. That's what Microsoft has wanted. It's a touchscreen interface with the tiles. That, that that's it's it's their beefed up version of, of like what Metro Windows Phone was originally, and and they they, they beefed it up. It, to, quite frankly, to kind of try to be like Apple once again, and uh, it's uh, it's turned into a real mess, especially on the Surface stuff. Yeah, because it doesn't speak very well to all the devices. It they, they just they, they don't work work together, which is supposed to be the whole idea of this portable stuff, is that it all works with the devices you have, and it, it, they're all just separate, disorganized things. Here's the thing: why why okay verbal? What what I can see it working. If, if at some point you can use smart glass to like control yeah. the tiles on your Xbox One interface, that'll make sense. But using a controller or a keyboard does not make sense. Work. When I was introduced to Windows 8 this past December, when I got my new PC, mm -hmm. the immediate thing I noticed with the overlay was that I have to scroll up and down on my 
mouse pad to scroll left and right, immediate disconnect in my mind to scroll left and right on the overlay. Yeah. And then when I realized how minimal the customization was on the overlay in terms of dragging, dropping, renaming files, creating folders, yeah. stuff I'm used to doing, I found myself getting in the habit of booting up my system, clicking on desktop, and just never using the interface. And I realized, I'm like, ugh, the only reason I would ever want to use this, type, this overlay is if I had the Surface. Exactly. For yeah. touching. Yeah. But other than that, it's useless. Yeah, and it seems like because of the focus has, has been on, on that overlay interface, the, the the usual desktop mode that people are used to is it's suffered because it of has that. suffered because it's been, it's it's almost like it's been buried. So your yeah. average person who who is used to DOS Windows 3.1 grew up in that era, they'll have to search to find the desktop function when they first, like it's confusing when you actually use it. I mean, you get used to it, but the more you start like if you're like me, you like to fine tune your computer and get into the guts of it. Yeah. You will never use the overlay. You don't need it. And the way that the, that the desktop mode is laid out, if you get it on a on a screen with a high enough res, where you gotta click the icons, and especially if you, if you go into the the Office apps, you're it, it's because of the resolution things are so like it, it's so hard to use in, in comparison to to that. But you're using it on something that you you, you it's meant to be a touch touchscreen interface you're using on, on, on something that isn't it's uh, it's it's a disconnect man it, it, it really feels gimmicky disconnect. it feels gimmicky it does feel gimmicky it, it feels and, I, and my brother said the same thing it's like this this overlay i don't use it it feels like something i have to get rid of and when yeah. you have something you need to click through, it's like a pop-up it's something that annoys you and 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 when you take that philosophy over xbox one you're, you're forcing people to start using voice commands and that's the problem with the ps4 right now yeah is that i'm sick of having to scale through that long x and b that i've actually started to use voice commands i'm like all right warframe and then i don't have to scroll through it but now and again back to what you're saying before about the price of the xbox mm -hmm. and what they sacrificed yeah. let's talk about connect let's wrap mm -hmm. it up by talking about what is pissing everybody off right now including myself the reason this thing costs five hundred dollars is mandatory connect. What do you think about connect? It's Does anybody give a shit about connect? No. Fuck. Sorry. It's it, it, it's 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 a it's a, it's another gimmick. There's some some things that you can do with it, but I mean sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You find yourself, you know, you see this a little bit with the PS4, but to you and I, we watched a, a, a little preview about it that Leo Laporte did on Twitch. Yes. That uh, they're, they're calling out to it and going Xbox, Xbox. The, the one time he had to call it about five or six times, and then it picked up. Did you notice Leo kind of rushes in with a controller at that point because he knows it's not working yeah, properly? Yeah, he, he got to the point where he just had to go with the home screen on, on the controller. Oh my god, it was embarrassing. It was like that video I posted where I was having a little fun and my and the PS4 wasn't recognizing my voice commands, but that was forgivable because that hasn't been a selling point. They don't, that's not in bold letter, oh yeah, the PS4 is voice commands. That's more of like gravy that they're working on, that if it works, fine, but you don't need it. You know, and the real kick in the ass about that is that the, the, the Kinect is, the, like you said, it's the reason why that console costs more. And I think it's the reason uh -huh. why that these games are being hard to program at yep. 1080p. Yep. It's because it's not only the RAM, but it's 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 the, the memory that has to use to function Kinect. And again, it's just, it's just, I don't need to call out to my TV to do things. Like I, I can do things quicker with a remote control on a controller. Yeah. I and just the fact is like this could have been the sales could have been way better if they if you didn't need Connect. They should have just made it made it an optional thing. Absolutely. Look at how PS4 does it. You can use the camera to do voice commands, but if you haven't bought the camera, all you do is you plug in yep. the packaged you earbuds the yep. that you don't have to pay for, and yep. you just speak into it, and bang, you got it. Yep. You know, and that's the thing. Like, and that means that that's why the PS4 could be 399. You didn't need to have the camera, and you still don't. Nope. It's not a necessity. It's yeah. it's a frill. Yeah. But yeah. it's a fun frill. But you don't have to you invest have to into it. With the, the Xbox and especially the uh, the more kind of home features, like when it, because the Xbox essentially has a uh, built-in set-top box in it, and uh, doing a lot of this but that doesn't necessarily require that voice command, but it's, it's encouraging you to do that, but it, it just, it, it's not, it doesn't feel natural or intuitive. We heard a good argument about Xbox TV, and this is what I've been saying too, and because I, I, I do work in the film and TV industry, and I've seen what's happened to the TV industry, nobody cares about TV in its previous form anymore, it's, the, it's going the way of the dinosaur, man. 
the whole idea yeah. of having a channel guide and channel yeah. three and four and NBC I and much music, it's not happening anymore. What does everybody say? I pay for cable, but there's nothing to watch because it's all reality shows, fake news, shows about cats. I cut the garbage. Cord. I cut the cord on cable probably a good five years. Longer for me. Because, because I got I got sick of paying for content that I wasn't watching. That's what I always felt like with cable. I'm paying for shows that I'm not even necessarily watching. That's why I'm an iTunes and Netflix person. I'm solely paying for the content that I want to watch. Exactly, man. It's like people are like, oh, Mike, have you kept up on TV so well? Like, not having cable. I'm like, the internet. Yeah. The internet. Yeah. You know, Netflix or Crackle or what your Hulu, wherever you are, what your poison yeah. is. I mean, yeah, the services are, are, are way more friendly to, to the viewer. And, and YouTube really is my new television. Like that's where I go to watch music videos, yeah. news. Like I watch alternative news, and that's only on YouTube and then the internet. Like, or if I want to watch a documentary, or I want to watch a funny video like it's YouTube or it's Ustream or it's Twitch you know it's yeah. it, it, that is the new industry and, I, and, and like I've been saying you know having been in the industry for over 10 years now the old way of doing things Hollywood TV is yeah. dead and people who are chasing after this fake dream yeah. and, and selling out and going to Hollywood and Toronto and Vancouver and working for the man they're chasing after the wrong thing man what we're doing right here now on iTunes, YouTube, wherever this is broadcasting, is the future, man. Like people are making money on YouTube, man. People are, are paying themselves to work. Now. And when it when it comes to, to the 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 TV industry, but they were they were a little more willing to go with the, the digital era of the people downloading stuff of iTunes. But the, the movie industry, they really really held up for a long time because they came at it from the wrong viewpoint. To, to them, their customer were the movie theaters. The wrong way to look at the customer is the person watching the movies and, and now people want to be able to watch their movies and stuff wherever they want to on whatever they want to that's right and it took and them a long time they, to, but they adopted and they, they, they found it but they didn't they, they didn't go without a fight though I'll tell you. oh absolutely and, 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 and i just think xbox putting their full force behind this dying concept of television another bad mistake <laughs> big mistake like it's yeah. just xbox tv like you've already got a program guide yeah. why do you need another one that's voice activated it's, it's so many of these companies have tried the set top boxing and like that every one of them gets scrapped you know, you, you know you, even even in uh you know google tv they, they tried to do stuff it it, it, it it just it's not what people want you know why because everybody's got a tablet Everybody's got a phone, yep. and all these things have a Netflix app, they have a YouTube app. Yep. You can watch it anywhere now. You do not need to be a slave to the program guide to nope. watch you know, Seinfeld at 8 o'clock. You can watch it anytime you want now, man. You yep. can stream it, you can download it, you can get it anywhere you want. Yep. It's, just, it's, just, it's just attention being paid. These aren't even like gravy things being added on these are mandatory things that are being used to sell the system they're trying to yep. sell this frankenstein device that does 10 things mediocre rather than two things really well yeah you know, and, and and what i love was on youtube a couple of podcasters have been saying that the ps4 is for games the xbox is a media player that also plays games. games that's a really good but i thought it. it was a console what is it trying to be? It doesn't know. It's, it doesn't have a vision. It doesn't, it doesn't have a vision. It doesn't have a it's clear very, very, plan. They're very, very confused as for all the stuff we've been talking about. It's not just with the Xbox. So getting back to it, what we start off with, it's about their problem with telling people what they want. They're telling people you need connect. Yeah. They're telling people you want facial recognition yeah. that's hooked up. We already know of their affili affiliation with the NSA. We already know that they've already ins it started installing connect sensors into street lights in the US. Look it up if you don't believe me, you think yeah. I'm crazy. Just look it up. Just look it up. Seriously. Yeah. Microsoft and the NSA are like this. You think that you it's so cool using your your facial tracking. Well they're 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 taking your face and putting it in the database. That's why I don't use facial recognition on my PS4. Yeah. It's fun. it's stupid. Like but yeah. hey, anyway, I mean it's just again telling people what they want. It's, and it's, Sony's been listening. It's it's a it's a real mistake to look at it that way. Yep. Look what's doing in Nintendo. Yep. Nintendo lives on an island. Yeah, it's uh, like I said to you earlier when we were talking about this earlier. Today, it's it's like they have got blinders on, and they're just they're just no, we're doing it our way, and, and we don't care what anybody else. We doing. feel that if we just confine ourselves yeah. and do what we want intuitively, yeah. that people will just want it. Well, guess what, Nintendo? 
This isn't 1993 anymore. They're, they're so convinced that that's the right thing. It's uh, you know that's probably getting into an old whole other thing itself. With the, right, but I think we can we, we can take the mistakes of Sega and especially yeah. Nintendo and look at where maybe Microsoft is digging their hole right now. So it Possible. remains to be seen. Yeah, I think we're you. Know, I think we're again we're gonna get a lot of trash talk on this one. Oh sure. But you know what? We're ready for it. So we will yeah. respond and we will do a follow up to this if need be. Sure. So um, yeah. So maybe you want to tell us, uh, give a little preview about our next podcast, what we're gonna be doing for uh, for the for the next episode of Roundtable. Uh, we're gonna be looking at uh, at sort of the uh, the portable uh, space. We're gonna be looking at. Uh, what everybody has to offer when it comes to Android, when it comes to Microsoft, when it comes to uh, iOS. Yeah, we'll specifically we'll be like comparing the the uh, the Mac, the the iPad Air. Yeah, we'll the be new Surface Book. We're gonna be looking Surface. at we're gonna be looking at you know which uh, which is is good for your typical user. We're gonna look at most importantly what's it's a really good one for gamers. Yeah, and we're we're also gonna look at uh, the Vita and how it seems to be. Carving out its own area in the portable wars, coming out into going into almost oblivion, in my in my opinion. And now, it, look at what happened with the 3DS. It dug itself out. That was yeah. other than the PS3 turning around it, yeah. itself around 2010. Yeah. Look at what happened to the 3DS, man. Yeah. Even the yeah. 3DS, I would argue, if your games player is up there as a viable oh, choice sure yeah. with any tablet or phone. Yeah. So we're gonna be gotta get into that. Uh, thanks for tuning in. This is the first podcast of Joystick Justice League presents the Roundtable. I'm Mike Frusios. I'm Joe Moore. And uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. I'll also check out our blogs. Uh, I have my own personal blog called the Alarm Bell Network. It's alarmbellnetwork.wordpress.com. You can check me out, uh, as always, on uh, joemoren.blogspot.ca. You can like us on Facebook and follow our daily updates. We post uh, news about the industry, helpful tips yeah. on how to program, anything. All so, kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah, subscribe to us on Facebook. And you can even watch uh, us stream live on our Twitch channel, 24 Bit Heroes. So, Again, uh, peace out from the Joystick Justice League. S subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, stay tuned again for some more breaking news as well when we get to re together to record next. All right, sounds good. All right, see you later, guys. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Watching, watching. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Have a good one.